You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it is Friday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's going on in the world of volatility? Well, let's find out together. It is time for Volatility Views, the premier program. For volatility traders. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the, don't forget the, the, <laughs> the optionsinsider.com is the place to go to check out all this great content we have. Of course, this network available pretty much on every audio platform under the sun. If you want the mobile app, it's available for you there in all the different app stores as well. If you like what you hear, throw some stars wherever you get it, whatever platform it's available on. It does help new people continue to discover the world of vol and all the content on the network these days. And of course, if you want more content in your lives, and who doesn't these days, then head on over to theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That's the place to go to learn more about all of our pro offerings. You get, of course, Options Oddities coming up after this show today. So your, your audio, your week doesn't end with volatility views. And then, of course, you get the pro Q&As every week as well. You get now, if you go up there, 200 plus hours worth of content already available for you the second you hit the button <laughs> it's pretty crazy as well as of course a live access to this everything else we do and maybe coming up today we'll see winner of the may pro trading crate perhaps we will reveal that today here on the show as we reveal who's joining us on the show today first we go out to the southern volatility mecca known as austin soon to be the home of rmc 2023 where we are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show, sir. All right, Mark. Good to see you. I'm glad we're glad you're here. Glad we're all here. And uh, yeah, quite the day here. Quite the trading day. Looking forward to having you here in Austin. We're going to take you out for some barbecue. We're going to um, you know, go check out F1. We're going to have ourselves a good time when you come down. So uh, just be, re be ready there, Longo. I and, am uh, ready. You know, maybe I'll make you buy the steak this time. Ooh, fun. I'll buy the barbecue. It'll be good. I won't buy the F1. I heard those tickets are absurd. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll put that one perhaps uh, on the old on the old SIBO as we are joined also this week once again in our ever evolving guest chair listeners. The fight, the battle for this guest chair is contentious. But once again, Mr. Rhodes has won the battle. Mr. Russell Rhodes the author of numerous volatility tomes, also holding court over there at the Kelly School of Business. So corrupting minds for the future. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to the show to you as well. I, uh, I, 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 you know what? It's, what is it? Seven hours and 52 minutes. It's a countdown. What are we counting down to? Taylor Swift. Oh. She hits the stage <laughs> at eight o'clock tonight. I'm calling in from my car in the parking lot at Soldier Field. I will be rushing in to get to my seat. 
You could tell I'm you're the excited. father of two teenage daughters. Yes, that is. Uh, I am the father of two Apocal event here in the Chicagoland area. I saw the headlines, people lining up at 1 a.m. to buy merch. Yep. It just seems I'm, I'm, like insanity. But hey, it is good times I'm nonetheless. Getting, I'm getting both you and the other Mark a Taylor Swift shirt. I, I look forward to it. I'm sure that won't be that cheap. So it'll be uh, quite the outlay for you. I, I nice. appreciate the effort there. Speaking of outlays and just giving gifts, Mr. Rhodes, I am going to give you a gift, which you in turn are going to give to our pro members because I just fired up the Wheel of Death, a.k.a. the prize wheel for who will win the May Pro Trading Crate. And Mr. Rhodes, since you're joining us today in the hot seat, you get pride of place. You get to pick. So the wheel is spinning right now. It's got all the member numbers in there for our pro members. When you tell me to stop, I will hit stop. And that will tell us oh, who okay. our member I is. So, I don't have to guess a number? No, you don't have to guess a number. Maybe we could do it that oh. way, too. But let, I like just hit and stop. Uh-huh. It's easier. Then everybody's in it. Does, so whenever- some, does, somebody have, does somebody have member number 420? <laughs> I'll have to go look and see. I don't, I don't know all the I'm numbers off the top of my head. All right. I'm getting right. I'm going to count down to stop. You ready? All right. Three, two, one, stop. All right. There we go. I was right exactly on the trigger finger, listeners. So no one can accuse me of any bias whatsoever all right so let's go that is not member 420 but it is oh wow alan one of our original one of our og members mr alan i think you've won one before but it's been a while so there you go rounded out a second pro training crate my goodness the luck the fortune is upon you sir wow congratulations to you hey we love all of our long-standing folks who've been with us for a while so we're happy to send out maybe not happy maybe happy is a strong word because if you look at shipping rates these days these things are exorbitantly expensive to send out i don't know what i was thinking when i when i created this pro trading crate but you know what it's fun we got to get this stuff out of here to somebody so glad it goes to you folks here alan congratulations you want to get your name entered into the hats for the drawing for the june pro trading crate only one place to go the options insider.com slash pro as we keep on going right on into the volatility review It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Volatility Review. And you know, for the crate, Mr. Rhodes, we, we include educational content in there, usually educational tomes. We have a bunch of others to choose, so I don't think we have any Russell Rhodes books. Maybe, I think those are all gone. We might have to we're restock have to, on the Russell Rhodes. That. Yeah, we might have to restock the Russell Rhodes tomes. So we could send some of those out. I think the last one we have on, on hand is the Advisors and Institutions one, I believe. Okay. All the rest. No, that's, not, that's not a very good book. <laughs> so, um, so the, I, I admit that's not a very Says good the book. author of it. So that's the last yeah. one, Stan. We'll have to restock the Russell Rhodes shelf. So future winners can take home some Russell Rhodes wisdom. Let's see what you're taking home out there in the market today, listeners. And, you know, it's one of those days, listeners. Apparently, we're back to the good news is good news paradigm again. Because the market blowing through the jobs number this morning, just knocking the cover off the ball, which you would think in hindsight, given all of the efforts of the Fed over the past year to rein this market in, rein this economy in, rein inflation in, you'd think that might be more than a little concerning to people when we have, oh, 339,000 jobs versus the 190,000 expected. (laughs) That kind of shows you that everything the Fed has thrown at this issue has been for naught. We have done nothing, and uh, yet the market just exploding with exuberance at this result, listeners, up nearly 1.5% in the S&P. So we're closing in on 4,300, the S&P. We were just a little bit shy of 4,100 just a few sessions ago. So rocking and rolling a couple of sessions out here for the S&P. So apparently good news is good news again, listeners. Put that in your docket, unless, of course, you want to maybe rein in inflation, in which case maybe not, not the best news. But hey, pay no attention. To the man behind the curtain, Dow up nearly 2%. So Dow leading the pack today. We got a bit of an inversion day because the NASDAQ's being the laggard today, up a little over 1%. So a little bit of inversion of what we normally see out there. All this green on the screen means vol has gone to die. Listeners, uh, VIX Cash 1480 when we kicked off the show. We were just talking about how crazy it was to have a 15 handle yesterday. We were at 1580 on the option block yesterday. Off another point from there. 
<laughs> so they are just coming for Vol. We are, it's scary to say out loud, we are now not that far, listeners, from the insane 12-handle days of 2017. Of course, we got much lower in 2017. We got into single digits. No one wants a repeat of that, but we are now 2.8 handles away from <laughs> This is terrifying, but that's the word we're in, listeners. Down three points from last Friday's show. Uh, VIVIX also coming back down to earth, 85, down 12 points from where it was this time last week. Vol Q, 17 and three quarters, down about one and a half points. So a lot to unpack there. Speaking of unpacking, let's go to the Southern Volatility Mecca. Mr. Meatball, are you surprised that we're back in the good news is good news paradigm again? And are you also surprised that we're rocking a 14 handle out there today in VIX? And what else is catching your eye out there, sir? Uh, No, I'm not surprised. I believe I've been calling for the VIX to go to maybe 12 or 13 for some time. uh, And I think we're well on our way. Uh, Now, do I think that parts of the market are overbought? Yes, the NASDAQ 100 is way overbought. But that doesn't mean we're going to sell off because I think what you're going to be looking at is some underperformance of the triple Q. Uh, underperformance of the mega caps, and you're going to start seeing some of those industrials. So the reason why good news is good news is the industrials have been so hammered. We're so worried about, um, we're so worried about recession that now, um, you know, when we get this positive employment report, what do you see? You see the industrials, you see the materials, you see the financials all take off. Meanwhile, you get a little bit of underperformance out of all the hot AI names, uh, you know, your Apples, your Googles, all the mega caps that have really held up this market. Uh, you know, so what's interesting is on the rally, for most of this rally, the, the S&P has been going up, but the market breadth has been awful. Today, um, it's the opposite of that, right? The, the mega caps aren't doing that much, but the market breadth is great. So... We could see a scenario where we just kind of creep higher in the S and P for the next few few days, and VIX just kind of dies and dies and dies and dies. Um, we've seen a just dramatic drop in the VIX future. Uh, it's gotten absolutely smoked. The whole curve has gone has steepened significantly, uh, and we'll talk about that in a second. But um, no, this is this is kind of what I. You know, I think the the strength of this rally is a little surprising, but the fact that we're rallying, not a surprise. The fact that we're seeing the NASDAQ kind of be the laggard here a little bit, um, being lifted by kind of the bottom end of the NASDAQ. So, for instance, this is something we haven't seen in a while. QQQE, that's the equal weighted triple Q, is actually outperforming uh, the triple Q itself, RSP. The equal weighted S&P 500 index outperforming the S&P. And what that shows us is that some of the less loved sectors are the ones leading us today. Something that we had not seen in quite some time. Mr. Meatball, you know what my first indicator, before I even fired up my vol screens for the second half of this week or anything along those lines. You know what my first indicator was that the vol worm was turning, sir? I fired up this account just to check some things that were in there. And I was like, what is this strange little burst of green here in this forgotten portion of this account? And I looked into it. Oh, yeah. Remember all those June 15 puts we bought six months ago on this show? And we were like, these are only seven (laughs) cents. They were seven cents. (laughs) And it was just a fun lark to do. It was like six months ago. It was so long. I've totally forgotten about them. It was was at least two months ago. Oh, it was more than that. And I bought some myself and sold half my position at 20, 21 cents, up 200%. Yeah, isn't that ridiculous? I happen to see those. It's I was like, wait awesome. a minute. And I'm going to sit this? on more of them because, you know, you the VIX is 1480, continuing to drop. These things could be worth a buck. <laughs> I had the exact same thought. What if these puts go up at a buck? <laughs> it's absolutely insane. Uh, so, yeah. So, that, folks. That was- I think the lesson here is listen up when Mark and I are getting on a trip. Yes, yes. When we get giddy about nonsense, join us in the fun <laughs> because uh, you never know if six months later you too could have a surprise windfall in your back pocket. I mean, and it was just, maybe it was that so, should be our moniker. Yes. Volatility views where nonsense pays. Yeah, well, there we go. I would listen to a show like that where nonsense pays. Uh, there certainly is an air of truth about that. Mr. Rhodes, sir. What nonsense, aside from Taylor Swift, <laughs> what nonsense is catching your eye out there in the market today, sir? Russell, 
Your namesake look index, Russell, sir? Look, look at the Russell 2000 today. Are we looking at it? It is popping. See that 2.68%? Dang. Yeah. The, um, I, the, the Russell basically just a couple of weeks ago was down on the gear while everything else was up. And we we had the widest divergence in performance between the Russell to start a year and the S and P five hundred, uh, really since two thousand. And um, the Russell is gonna Russell go play some catch up. I, I I've been getting in shape so I can push all the Taylor Swift fans out of the way to get to the uh you know to get to the merch and everything. So <laughs> I I'm in a better shape and the Russell two thousands in better shape today as well. Yeah, that was one of the more surprising dichotomies of the market is yeah. just no one gave a crap about small caps at all. It was getting annihilated, right? It was down for the year at one point while everything else was just getting carried. Obviously, Russell lacks those six to eight stocks we're always talking about that have carried the rest of the market on their back this year. So that's a, that's a big differentiating factor. But still, yes, uh, this is a resurgence out there today. Small caps up almost 3% listeners, 2.9%. So I've been joking on, on the option block for a while. You know, is this 1 million contracts a day sustainable in IWM? It didn't seem like that was the case. And I have been proven wrong. And I am happy to admit it because uh, Russell putting up some numbers and doing so again today. Uh, speaking of numbers, let's see what numbers we got in store for us out there on the VIX futures front listeners. And coming into showtime, a spoiler alert, they're down. <laughs> Whole curve obviously taking a nice shift down too, which will be nice if we see that that chasm, that gulf continue to collapse between the cash and that June future. Uh, one of them has to go somewhere at some point. But right now, when we come in to start the showtime, it was still at about 2.1 points. We got a little more collapse on that. And then those June 15 puts will be going towards that mythical $1 level. I'm just going to work a $1 offer now and we'll just see. I'm just going to be. I'm going to be that obstinate of a guy. If it gets to 90, 90 sod cents, <laughs> I'll be like, nope, $1. <laughs> Not rich enough for my blood. Uh, but yes, coming into showtime, listeners, the whole curve down the front portion, the June coming in, two and a half points, hence those June 15 starting to look juicy. Uh, the July future down about two and a quarter points. Looks like we top out at around a 23 now, and that's getting out into next year. That's getting out at around February in the curve about it's february 23 15 or so so a 23 handle now is the upper bound at least for the for this week out there on the futures which is intriguing mr meatball sir anything catching your eye out there in the volatility futures this week oh yeah for sure i mean the 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 futures curve has just gotten smashed i mean absolutely smashed and what's interesting is vvix it's down half a point today So what does that actually mean, though? Well, when the VIX curve is getting smashed and VVIX is only down a half a point, that's actually telling you that vol is not really going down very much in um, the futures themselves. So, you know, for instance, think about, Mark, two days ago, um, the the June future closed at 1890. It's down to 1680. It's dropped 1685. It's dropped two bucks in two days. Um, the, the July future, 2045 to 1870. Aug, 2133 to 1980. September, 2220 to 2092. The whole curve has steepened and gotten smoked. And, you know, we're now in a, a really deep, deep contango here. Uh, it's hard to argue with, um, you know, the, what, what this means. And it's basically telling us, hey, Vol, you know, even with how hard, hard they've smashed it, with the future at 1680 and the, and the VIX at 1480, you actually have still a nice wide spread between that June future and uh, where the cash index is. Yes, it has been something we've been talking about here on the show for a while. It continues to be an intriguing point, listeners. Do you have any of those June puts in your back pocket? What are you slinging out there in June to take advantage of that, that crazy chasm? Maybe maybe collapsing sometime soon. We shall see. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, same question for you, sir. What is catching your eye out there in the ever-evolving volatility surface this week? 
ev constantly evolving and morphing uh, volatility surface. Uh, you know, I'm trying to find the exact date, but we had a, a period of time, just a, a couple of days recently, where VIX got up to, where is that? The 25th. Okay. Trying to find the term structure for the 25th. But we had uh, some days where VIX got, you know, looked like it was going to start making making some moves to the upside. And for instance, uh, the on the 25th, uh, VIX was a little above 19, and the June future, which uh, this is a five-week cycle, so even though it was uh, May 25th, we still had some time to expiration, was at a, a, a premium of about a buck 30 or so. And you could see when VIX was climbing, you know, just a couple of times back in May, that for lack of a better way to say it, the futures guys weren't biting. And when, you know, when VIX is making some moves to the upside, and the futures contracts are not mirroring that move to the upside. Uh, I, I often think uh, that if, if you're worried about you know VIX creeping up right now and the futures guy has haven't been biting on it, it's probably going to come back down. And sure enough, you know just a few few days later, VIX is under 15, which is absolutely shocking. Uh, and you know, the futures are now at a little over a two point premium, but they're still much lower than they were. You know, they've dropped uh, from 20 and a half to the front month future right now is where? Uh, get it, get it, get it. You know, 16 or so. So we've gotten a drop of almost four points there. And we've gotten a drop of a little over five point or about four points in the uh, index as well. So just always, 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 if you're trying, if you're looking at VIX and thinking about it being some sort of indicator, uh, or you're reacting to what's going on in VIX, make sure you check the front month futures because uh, that relationship, in my mind, is actually more important than just looking at pure VIX by itself. Let's keep on rolling. Speaking of VIX, let's get out there to the mothership listeners. And man, it is a beefy, a hefty mothership out there today. This is the most active day we've seen in quite some time, certainly by this portion of the day. We've already done well more than a day's worth of, of volume on, a, on an active day, on a good day. On a good day, you might see VIX 1.01, maybe 1.1 million contracts total for the day on a pretty banger day. And that's what we've seen lately, topping out around that level. Today, already, listeners, 1.36 million contracts on the tape today. So just, just a banger day by just about any measure on trajectory to maybe threaten 2 million contracts today. Wouldn't that be something? So apparently just the dwindling of the fear of recession is going to drive us into the stratosphere from a volume perspective out there. Pay no attention to the inflation man potentially lurking behind the curtain out there. Uh, the ADV also back up to 800,000 contracts, up about 26,000 contracts from this time last week. So VIX, all things are pointing up this week, at least from a volume perspective, obviously down from a net value perspective. Let's get out into the top 10 listeners, then we shall unleash the beast known as Russell's Weekly Runda. I know that's what you're all here for. That's what everyone's paying the big bucks for, to hear that sweet, sweet tune. I heard Taylor Swift's going to cover it on the show, Russell, so stay tuned for that. This week, listeners, we are back to eight calls versus two puts. You think you might find one or two more puts in the top 10, and given everything we're seeing playing out out there, maybe, oh yeah, they're there. The June 15 puts are there, spoiler alert. But outside of that, you might see a few others. But no, only two this week, listeners. Cost you 196,000 contracts to break into the top 10 this week. That gets you all the way out to the July 25s, followed by number nine, our new best friend, 197,000 of the June 15 puts. Did you buy some of those when Mark and I were joking about them all those months ago here on the show? Listen, you'd probably be a happy camper if you did. Number eight, 200,000 of the June 23 calls. Number seven, 204,000 of the SEP 35s. Number six, 209,000 of the June 25s. Number five, our second and final put in our top 10 this week, 218,000 of the June 17 puts. Number four, 262,000 of the June 27s. Number three, 298,000 of the AUG 60s. Ah, the old 60 strike back in the crosshairs again, listeners. Number two, listeners, 317,000 of the SEP 60s. And number one, listeners, 352,000 of... The June 30s, you know what I didn't say in there, listeners, are the June 40s. So a little bit of evolution going on out there in our top 10 in Vixland. Before I break down the action from every day this week, listeners, you know what you're here for. We're all here for it. It is time 
for Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Wait for it. Got to do it twice, listeners. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. Mr. Rhodes, I hope your daughters are in the car with you and they are cringing at the sound. Oh, they're totally they're totally cringing, although they're they're just pissed because we've been sleeping in the car for two days so we can be first in line for merch. (laughs) Well, you got to do what you got to do. Those sweet rhinestone T-shirts aren't going to sell themselves. No, they are not. And, you you know, you can't find it any of the Michaels in the greater Chicago area. They're completely out of any any type of rhinestones right now. No sequins, no rhinestones. All No sequins. Yeah, we went to 12 of them and couldn't find them to, <laughs> for our outfits. What about glitter? Can you get glitter still? Uh, you can find glitter. Okay. So not, glitter. not out of everything. Gen- generally, generally at a Target near a strip club. So, um, yeah, we, we had no trading on Monday. Boom. Uh, Tuesday. With uh, VIX at 1868, way up there at 1868. Uh, somebody came in and did uh, using the June 7th options. Uh, pretty darn good trade here. Uh, they sold 1,500 of the 18 calls and they bought uh, 1,500 of the 24 calls. Uh, they took in a credit of a buck 10. They gave them a break even of 1910 when the index was at 1868. That's kind of nice. Uh, Checking the pricing, since prices have changed so much, I'm adding a feature to my weekly rundown. I'm going to tell you how these trades may be doing. Uh, And in this case, uh, last I checked, they could get out of this trade for 25 cents. So they took in a credit on Tuesday of a buck 10. They could get out at about a quarter right now. Uh, Odds are, I would assume they're just going to hold this one to Wednesday morning settlement. Uh, uh, Another trade that uh, I think was actually getting out of a trade on uh, a Tuesday once again. Uh, somebody bought back uh, a thousand of the May se- May 31st 17 puts, which expired the next day on the open. Uh, VIX was at 1790 at the time. Uh, the VRO came or the VIX settlement. That's the ticker for that is VRO. Uh, came in at 1806. But I I did some digging and I'm I couldn't figure out the price that they got in, but I'm pretty darn sure this is somebody covering that short. Probably didn't want to be you know didn't want to have overnight risk and suddenly wake up on Wednesday morning and have a big settlement that's much much lower than than anybody would have expected and had a negative surprise on that one. So it's probably worth 14 cents for them to get out of that one. Um, on Wednesday, uh, this this is not a good trade. Uh, somebody bought 6,000 of the June 7th, 47 and a half calls for four cents. Uh, they are zero bid today and and they haven't exited any of those. Uh, somebody also on Wednesday, somebody bought uh, 500 of the VIX June 7th, 17 puts for 33 cents. Uh, and VIX was around 1824 at the time. Uh, right now, the, the last I checked, the market was a buck 60 by 210. Uh, so, you know, you were, you were talking about the, the great put trade you guys have on. Uh, this is a really good one. Uh, almost a, uh, you know, almost a 500% return, I guess, depending on how you're able to get out of it. Uh, also on Wednesday, somebody came in and bought 430 of the June 7th, 18 calls for a buck four. Those are 20 cent bid today. And it doesn't look like they've gotten out of them uh, as well. And then um, Thursday... And Thursday and Friday. This is, I think it's the same trader. Uh, somebody came in yesterday, uh, assu- I guess, assuming that the market would not like today's employment number. Uh, and they came in and bought a little over 10,000 of the June 7th, 25 calls and paid 12 cents for them. Uh, almost the exact same volume has been sold today at pri- for the of the June 7th, 25 calls between four cents and five cents. So, my assumption is that was a, I bet you volatility is going to spike on that employment. That guy's like, trade. what about the inflation guy behind the curtain? Is no one's paying attention yeah, to him. what's going on here? <laughs> That's a glass half empty kind of guy. I can get behind that guy. Yeah, and, and I do want to throw something out there because it's something I monitor very closely. Uh, deviating from volatility for one second. Uh, the SPX at the money um, straddle was only priced at 60.64% yesterday. And that is like the lowest pricing in front of a non-farm payroll number 
if you you know if you take the straddle as a percent of uh, the um, and now I'm stalling because I'm trying to find my numbers, but uh, that is the lowest price for a strat for an SPX straddle in front of the non-farm payroll number since November of 2021. And in the NDX arena, the 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 straddle was priced at 0.96 percent, and that's the first time it's been pro- priced under one percent of the NDX value since November of 2021. Wow. And it's a dramatic drop, a dramatic drop in the anticipated pricing of both of those straddles. Uh, The SPX straddle is moving more than it today, and the NDX straddle is actually moving less than that. Uh, But uh, kind of surprising because we had an outlier move with the last employment number that the straddles were priced so low but you see trades like that. You see VIX moving down. You see uh, VVIX moving down, and you think uh, all the worry warts are getting, you know, they're they're getting off the field and giving up for the summer. Yeah, they're just they're just they're taking their ball <laughs> and not and, and not and, and going home and not going to let anybody play. They've taken their lumps. They're done. Well, why would you? Yeah. Why would you expect non farms to move the market? You know, that's that's crazy talk. Why why would such a thing happen? Uh, because last time. Uh, SPX rallied about two percent off of it. Uh, as one of the reasons, because the average move is greater than the average average daily move around non-farm payrolls, especially since we started getting worried about inflation, which was shortly after November of 2021. You no, know, it is hard to bid up S and P straddles when realized vol has been so anemic. Right, there's only so much you yeah. can do. You can only lift that dead weight so far before it just falls out of your grasp. And I think that's what was happening there. Uh, they bid it up as I, much as they could, but alas, or maybe for them a great thing because they got a deal. Yeah, I honestly, I was looking at selling a straddle. It's selling uh, either an NDX or an SPX straddle late yesterday, and the pricing of them just. I even wrote something on my Substack about you know this is what I think I'm going to be able to do, but the pricing was so freaking low. I just it 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 wasn't worth me to worth it for me to put the trade on. The juice not worth the squeeze out there. Listen, let's see if it's worth the squeeze. From an overall VIX volume perspective this week, and the short answer is yes. Listen, even with a shortened holiday week, they are making up for lost time. As I mentioned today already, 1.36 million contracts on the tape. Listen, as we rack that right now, let's see if any more has popped in since the last time we were talking. Of course, uh, the second I say that is when everything I have decides to go down. There we go. 1.4 million contracts now on the tape. VIX continuing to do gangbuster numbers. The big dog today, listeners, on a very big day, 159,000 of the AUG 20s going up out there today. Let's see. Quite a few of those bad boys piling in, though, today. AUG 20s, 159,000 of those, followed by number two, 111,000 of the July 26s. Number three, 60,000 of the SEP 25s. Number four, 53,000 of the SEP 30s. So all upside so far. Intriguing. Intriguing listeners were folks thinking perhaps uh, we were heading north. Were they bailing on this stuff because they had some in their back pocket? Either way, intriguing stuff. And number five here, 44,000 of the June 17 puts on a day when Vol is getting annihilated. Only one put to be found anywhere in the top 10. And it is a distant number five. Very intriguing out there. Yesterday, 1.21 million. So another banger day, listeners. The big dog yesterday, much smaller, 55,000 of the June 20. So that tells you. Uh, Today, these numbers really driven by a couple of massive trades. Yesterday, things much more even. In fact, everything in the top five yesterday was pretty much about the same size. Number one, like I said, 55,000 of the June 20s. Number two, 52,000 of the AUG 30s. Number three, 51,000 of the June 17 puts. Once again, only one put to be found. Number four, 50,000 of the AUG 42 halves. And number five, 50,000 as well of the July 30s. Wednesday, a comparatively very anemic day. Only 309,000 contracts on the tape, so everybody was asleep at the switch on Wednesday. The big dog, such as it was, 34,000 of the June 60s, 6-0. So once again, that 60 strike casting its just gravitational pull out there on traders' imaginations. Number two, 20,000 of the June 45s. Number three, 19,000 of the SEP 19 puts. Interesting. Number four, 17,000 of the June 30s. And rounding out the top five, 13,000 of the June 28 calls. Tuesday, a decently active day, but compared to today and yesterday, not much to speak of. 613,000 on the tape. 
you think you have a little more just to make up for Monday's paper, but say la vie. Number one on Monday, excuse me, on Tuesday, 40,000 of the June 30s. Number two, 34,000 of the June 20s. Number three, 27,000 of the June 19 puts. Number four, 27,000 as well of the June 19 calls. So maybe you got some straddle action going up there. Number five, 26,000 of the June 25s. Monday, obviously closed here in the U.S. for the Memorial Day holiday. Mr. Meatball, a lot going on out there. Kind of fascinating. We've seen Vol get annihilated the past few sessions. And apparently, from a volume perspective, nobody gives a crap about any puts. <laughs> Except for the June 17th. That's the only thing that's trading. And outside of those, is there anything else catching your eye out there this week? No, you know, I think they were already kind of loading up on puts over the last couple of days. And now it's just kind of the chickens come in a roost. But you are seeing a, a swath of call buying, which makes sense, right? We're, we're back in the 14s. Um, VVIX is at 84. It's relatively inexpensive to put on like a call spread. Pretty active day in uh, today on the September 2530 call spread. Um, so no, it, may, it makes total sense, right? We, we've already seen vol fall off. Uh, so why would we, you know, why would anybody be jumping on board of, you know, why would you be jumping on puts at this point? Because they want those June 15 puts that, as we just discussed, are racing headlong to a dollar. Who doesn't they want to get are on that train? Indeed. Who doesn't want to get on that train? Uh, Mr. Rhodes, outside of the weekly, sir, anything else catching your eye out there in the big mothership VIX options this week, sir? Nothing within the, the VIX options. Nothing, you know, no, no big trade that, that caught my eye going into this weekend or or into, I'm sorry, today's report. No, nothing terribly exciting. Isn't that great? I, I, this is why you don't have me on every week. That is fascinating ah. radio, sir. Instead, we'll keep on. I know a product that does fascinate you, though, sir, and probably pretty fascinating uh, yeah, And today. that's what I want is I want to get to that one. Yeah, you want to get to that. I know where <laughs> you're going, sir. He has clearly established in previous appearances, listeners, that Russell's biggest holding is SVIX. He cannot get enough of it. Hitting a new 52 or all-time high, actually, today, 2279 listeners, just madness here across the board. SVIX, of course, our inverse friend, up three and three quarters from where it was this time last week. Just yesterday, we were saying it hit a new high yesterday. We thought maybe it had reached its apex for a little while. Nope. Another point and change to be found out there today. Uh, putting up some numbers out there today, 1,368 contracts on the tape today. That number is intriguing because the ADV is 1,362. So <laughs> already hit it's ADVs worth of paper today. Looks like the big trades out there today are 160 of the Dece eight puts. Wow, that one wouldn't have that one would not have been my first choice, but that's what we got. Number two, 150 of the SEP eight puts. So okay. <laughs> SEP and Dece eight puts leading your dance out there in SVIX today. Listen. Okay, that's a weird one. Let's go out to the overall uh, top positions out there in SVIX land. Uh, the top position out there, let's just do a top couple because there aren't that many size positions yet. Let's do a top three. And the number one position out there, again, the eight put has fascination for someone, listeners. 1,700 of the June eight puts is the number one position out in SVIX, followed by number two, 1,200 of the July eight puts. Are you, are you on this eight put train here in SVIX, listeners? If so, hit me up. Let me know why. What is, what is your axe to grind on the eight strike? 1,100 for number three of the SEP 35. So we talked about this before, that crazy dichotomy between the eight puts and the 35s but that's what we got out there in svix you know those 35s don't seem as outlandish as they did a week ago so crazy town uh, mr rhodes now is your time sir you can sound your horns play your trumpets and celebrate because i know you love yourself some svix i love myself some svix i i do have some short calls against some of my positions out there uh i, I i'm wondering if people that bought eight and nine strike puts realize this is a short volatility product. <laughs> They're just completely and, confused. You know, and I'm going to tell you something. You, you you laugh at that. Mark Sebastian laughs at that. I don't laugh Pretty at much, anything. Yeah, no, you should laugh at that because it sounds so freaking silly. But I can tell you from my time at the Options Institute, there are people that do things like that because they call into the helpline. And, and so it, it's not beyond the realm a possibility that they think that that's a VIX ETP and that VIX is going lower and they bought puts on it. And they think, look at how cheap these puts are. 
Well, they were cheap for a reason. Uh, no, my, um, I have been diversifying my short volatility exposure. I have been buying a ZIVB, <laughs> which is the mid-curve short. Everyone's favorite, ZIVB. Yep. Sure. And, and, I, and I have been, I've been, I, you know, like I said, I, have, I, I, like the, I like having a consistent short volatility position. Uh, I've probably been more aggressive selling some calls on the recent strength than I should have been. So we'll we'll see how big the position is uh, come June sixteenth. Do you have a strike du jour for your preferred overwrite, sir? Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, somebody is somebody specifically asking that. I mean, I, I'm uh, just heading it off. I'm sure we'll get it. Uh, so, well, the most recent ones I saw were the twenty threes. There you go. There you go. So listeners, so, I headed and off. that that was this morning. <laughs> well, there you go. Good timing there, sir. And now no, now I, those thirty fives are coming to play. It, Every time it climbs a couple of points, I sell another out of my call. Now that you sold those, we know the 35s are coming home to roost, sir. So good times. Yeah, that's, that's exactly where it's <laughs> going to exactly, go. That's exactly where it's going. I'm going to own no shares of the <laughs> So there you go, listeners. I knew your questions. I can anticipate you guys by now. Let's get on out. Well, before we do that, Mr. Meatball, I know you kind of look at SVIX. It hasn't really got the liquidity yet. Uh, Mr. Rhodes kind of in love with the underlying. Is that your case as well? You've been slinging any underlying? You slinging any SVIX at all these days? Uh, you know, I'm literally was rolling some calls today. So I was long the 20 calls. I am selling them and buying some 23 calls for June. So nice. yes, I have been trading some SVIX. Did I sell those to you? <laughs> I could have made the trade right here. Saved uh, you, some you might commissions. Have. I don't know. Did you I, sell I, them I at 70 cents? Because if you did, then I bought them from you. Oh, my God. That would That's be what makes a market. So, and my daughter, my daughter's heard that I've made a lot of money on Zesvix. So apparently, I'm buying uh, three seventy-five dollars sweatshirts. Um, <laughs> nice. The the three concert. So there, there's two hundred and fifty or two twenty-five, and I'm just I'm looking at the merch right now. I saw someone got up at one in the morning to go buy two thousand dollars worth of Taylor Swift merch. So I don't think you're in that category yet. And they and they wouldn't even need anybody to help them carry it. Yeah, probably not. It's probably like a <laughs> three three halter tops and who knows a, a t shirt or something. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, two grand out there, listeners. Uh, so you folks, are you down with SVIX? Are you intrigued? Are you doing what Mr. Rhodes is doing a little bit of buy in the underlying and then overriding at consecutively higher levels? Are you just doing what the meatballs doing? You buying calls and then rolling up? Are you trading with each other like they are out there, listeners? Uh, couldn't do that if you're standing in the SPX these days. If you wanted to trade with each other, couldn't do it. You got to put the order. Through a broker. How crazy is that? As we keep on rolling out to uh, Uvix, the other side of this equation, listeners. Uh, Uvix, the levered product, taking a whooping, I think is a technical term out there. Just a wee bit north of the seven handle right now. Seven, ten down, almost two and a half, about 2.4 handles on the week. Starting to put up some numbers, though. 13,000 contracts. The ADB is 12,000. It's already beating that. It's up 1,000. You know, Mark, I was talking before, I was not a huge fan of their relatively anemic reverse split the last time for this exact reason. I just said, we're going to have to do this dance again in a couple of months. And lo and behold, here we are again, sir, back below the 10 handle in Uvix. What are your thoughts on this ever eroding product, sir? I mean, if you are a put buyer, it's a great product. Uh, If you are able to manage... Uh, you know, or if you're willing to put a leg out when balls in when vol spikes up and buy some puts, you can do excessively well uh, in Uvix because of the speed with which it will die. Um, this is one of my favorite products to trade. Uh, one of my favorite products to to kind of monitor. Um, we've been seeing the option volume pick up pretty substantially, uh, and we've been and we've seen obviously the stock volume. Uh, is now pretty nice in this thing. Let me tell you what the stats look like. Yeah, I mean, they've got the average volume up over 7 million shares now. Uh, and the average uh, the average volume is up to about 3,000 contracts a day. Still needs to grow, but definitely an improvement. Uh, I'm looking today, and it looks like somebody sold for a win the June 9 puts at 2 bucks. 2,500 times. Nice trade, bro. Uh, and then uh, you've got some dabblers on the long ball side starting to step in because they think this thing's gotten oversold. We'll see whether they're right or wrong. 
Indeed. Mr. Rhodes, same question for you. Are you dabbling at all in the sibling product of your favorite thing, Ubixer? Nah, I've been pretty much keeping myself uh, with exposure to the law. You know, if, if I think that, um, that we're going to get a spike in volatility, uh, I tend to, I tend to lean, lean toward the, uh, the VIX options. So, and I know you can take the other side of UVIX, et cetera. I've just always been, uh, I was, I loved SVXY until they, they deleveraged it. <laughs> so I was thrilled to see SV. I mean, really, I, I, I think, I think SVXY is putting one of my kids through college and I got to use S SVIX to do the other one. So I kind of stick with what I know and I've always had a good feel for, for, you know, that the one times inverse VIX. Ah, uh, the formerly beloved, now neutered SVXY. Pour one out for good old SVXY listeners. You don't have to do much for UVXY. 260 down six tenths of a point. I guess they're just letting this thing go to zero. Options Queen in our chat asked the question on everyone's mind now. What will reverse split first, UVX or UVXY? <laughs> I think it's clear now that the UVXY folks don't give an F about this product because they're just letting it dwindle. I mean, it's already the 10 handle is usually where people start thinking about this. The five handle definitely. And we've been below both of those for ages now in UVXY. So they clearly do not care. A UVIX starting to threaten the five handle soon too as well. So they're going to have to start reverse splitting again. So apparently they're cool with reverse splitting every quarter. I guess that's going to be their deal. But uh, say la vie, intriguing stuff out there. Like we said, 180,000 is the ADV. Actually managing to be up 1,000 this week. So people are still trading this, even though the the value continues to just defy the use case for options every week. Uh, the big position out in UVXY, 37,000 of the SEP 8s. Man, someone's, what's with the 8 strike across the board? Someone's really got huge axes to grind out there on the 8 strike. Let's get out of here on everyone's favorite. Our buddy on the show last week, Mr. Jim Carroll, this is his favorite. He's now VXXologist, as we called him on the show last week. Good old VXX at a 31 when we kicked off the show, still hanging out at about a 31. That's still down an impressive 460 on the week, listeners. So nearly five handles coming off the top here for VXX. So starting to do what it's supposed to do. The ADV 51,000, so also moving in the right direction, about 4,000 more than it was uh, this time last week. The big position out there in VXX, it will be and still until the middle of this month, it'll be the June 80s. Those are the VXX ones, so they're not really going anywhere. It's kind of a roach motel for liquidity on that pre-split adjusted stuff. Behind that in, actually, no, we have another VXX one. We have the June 20s still. So the top two positions are still pre-split adjusted nonsense. Uh, so once we get those off the board, then we'll have uh, some more liquid stuff we can sink our teeth into out there. Mr. Rhodes, are you also becoming like your buddy, Mr. Carroll? Are you now going to be a VXXologist, sir? I love being a, a VIX ETPologist. Apologist or apologist. Yeah, I guess apologist yeah, I probably was a VIX ETP apologist for years. <laughs> apologist uh, would be would be <laughs> fitting, sir. I think that would that would it would be. <laughs> but uh no, Jim uh Jim and I are are very close to being at the same firm. So you're gonna have to figure Ooh. out which one uh -oh. you want to have on the Vol basis. implosion happening. I know. Whatever firm that Ooh. is, sir. I can't disagree with with Jim. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Meepo, I know you've been eyeing VXX a little bit more these days. Are uh, you dipping your toes in those? Well, nice move this week. It is a nice move this week. Um, yeah, you know, we were we actually had we're short that paired with a um, SPX uh, put fly, and um, on when we got that dip yesterday. Uh, we managed to unwind the whole thing with VXX up nicely and uh, our, our little put, fl put fly up nicely on the open ended up paying off pretty pretty nicely uh, before we took off. Um, any Anytime you get the curve this steep, uh, there's there's some opportunity in that product. It can just keep going lower. I love that it's got some teeth to it too. Still trading $30, so yes. I, I'm a fan. Nice when both legs of a trade pay off for you, isn't it? Not just one. That's always it always, is always a it nice is thing. Indeed. You're getting some nice love out there in the earnings vol front listeners. Check them out. The options insider.com. Click on the earnings news, earnings trades, earnings volatility reports, all that good stuff available there for you listeners. As we keep on rolling, it is time to get dangerous. It is time 
for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the crystal ball, the portion of the show where we try to wrestle with the slippery gods in the vol space, see what they have in store for us for the coming weeks. And Mr. Rhodes, Dr. Vic's defense force out in earnest. Uh, you weren't even on the show last week, but you did get a bullseye. I was generous to you. It was close, but not quite within our tenth of a point. I said, you know, it was so close that I had to give it to you. And uh, we have Dave chiming in today on Twitter to remind us to make sure you get your victory lap for last Woo! week's crystal ball. So the, the Russell defenders, the Russell apologists are out there in force. They want to make sure you get your flowers, sir. So there you go. Bask. Bask in last week's I'm, victory, I'm sir. Basking in this blind squirrel finally finding his nuts on this show. <laughs> this, this, this would be, a, you know, if, the, if this were a series finale, I think that's how it would round up. It would be a feel-good show as the, the worst participant in the history of the crystal ball <laughs> finally gets a bullseye. Your track record, let's say, over your extended run with SIBO was not exactly stellar. It was not good. <laughs> Part of it, yeah. though, was it was your job to have to keep buying VIX higher every week. So that didn't help uh, you. But no. uh, speaking of VIX being higher, all of us, <laughs> all of us screwing the pooch on the show last week. It was myself, the Rock Lobster, and VXXologist. And all of us had North. A VXXologist, he was feeling this non-farms was going to wipe us out. He was at a 2120. Andrew was at a 17 and a quarter. I was at an 1875. Spoiler alert, no 14 handles, let alone no 17 handles in Q. So, yeah, no winner this week, even close listeners. So I will put the caveat out there. There will be no volatility views next week. I will be at a very important event, so I will not be able to attend the show. So we are now guessing for two weeks to make things even more difficult, listeners out there. So, Mr. Rhodes, you won last week. We will give you pride of place this week, sir. What are you feeling for VIX in two weeks? Uh, in two weeks. Oh, my God. That's so far out into the future. 1675 on VIX. And are we still doing vol Q as well? Or are we? If you want to, whatever you want, I'll let you choose. You can pick whatever vol products float your boat, sir. You want to so do UVXY two half? I'll let you have it. All right, sixteen seventy five on VIX because uh, you know it, it's so low and it just can't go much lower. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, we're going to do, do vol Q. I'm going to say I'm going to put it right at a twenty. Dang, that spread it is seems exploding. to be holding up a bit better. You know, the, the outperformance of the big cap, the, the, the really large stocks in the NDX, uh, if there starts to be concern around that, you're going to see put purchasing on those stocks. And due to dispersion trading, that's going to work its way into um, the NDX arena as well. So I, I think that one's going to stay a little elevated. All right. Mr. Meatball, same question. Individual names. Same question for you, sir. What do you feel in for a ball this time in two weeks? Well, all right. Well, that's a little harder. Um I got to tell you, I think we'll see some selling next week. Uh, just some some profit taking. I think we're going to see um, the S and P down, but not market, but market breadth actually positive. Kind of the opposite of what we've seen the last few weeks. Uh, and then maybe we get uh, some continued vol selling uh, the following week. We lose you. Oh, I'm I'm thinking about <laughs> a good <laughs> deep thought calendromic number fourteen. 41. Wow, 1441 for the meatball. I wrote in my answer while meatball was talking. I'm not feeling that dissimilar from what Russell was putting down. I'm going to be crazy now, listen, crazy with a 17 handle. Insane how much vol that is, 1705. Remember, this is for two weeks, so there's your, there's your market. I'm a little uncomfortably close to Russell, but that's what I was feeling. You can't deny your volatility heart at the end of the day, listeners. All right. That is going to do it for us here on Volatility Views this week. I want to thank everyone who took the time to tune in with us for this show, for everything else this week. And before we go, Mr. Meatball, sir, if folks want to check out what you got cooking, where should they go? What should they do? 
you know what you're going to want to do is come to optionpit.com. I'm writing about VIX and volatility and index fall just about every day on my VIX Edge blog. Yesterday, I made note that I was expecting to see some outperformance out of the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the next few days. Uh, lo and behold, it is uh, blown the doors off of the other two kind of major indexes. Uh, again, one more time, and I think it's interesting that uh, the equal weighteds are doing so well. I think it just shows you that we're seeing a little bit of rebalancing and um, a little bit of logic return to the overall marketplace. A little bit of so logic. optionpit.com. There you go. Check them out. Optionpit.com is the place to go. And Mr. Rhodes, if you want to check out all of your various tomes, or who knows, maybe, uh, maybe subscribe for one of your courses there at the Kelly School of Business. Where should they go? What oh. should they do? Goodness gracious! Well, Kelly, you gotta you gotta go through a rigorous, um, a, a rigorous process to get into that program. Um, but if you you want to know what I'm up to, I always tweet out what I'm up to, uh, much like I did about this program and butchered that tweet earlier today. But I try, and then I do a review of the of what's going on in the markets via Substack every Saturday, and then uh, typically I do a preview. Uh, on on Sunday, I, I gave myself last weekend off, but uh, I'll get back on it uh, starting tomorrow morning as far as that goes. And then periodically, uh, the, the numbers that I was talking about with respect to the SPX and the NDX straddles, uh, that comes from something that I published midday yesterday on my Substack, just talking about what the history around the non-farm payroll number was. If you think about it, is sort of an earnings announcement for the uh, for the overall market. There you go. Check him out, listeners, on his sub stack. Of course, you can always give him a follow at Russell Rhodes, two S's, two L's, R-H-O-A-D-S, all one word over there on Twitter. You, too, can be like all of his defense forces who think we don't give Russell enough flowers here on the show. There we go. We celebrated him suitably. You're right. All you pointed it out. It is a rare occurrence that Russell gets the crystal ball. <laughs> we should celebrate him suitably. As I mentioned, that is going to do it for all of you on-demand folks that will conclude your broadcast week with us this week. Thank you for joining us. We love you all out there. Uh, We'll be back in a little bit for all you pro folks with Options Oddity. Should be some fun, unusual activity to sink our teeth into this week. I was just looking over some of the trades. There is definitely some intriguing stuff. If you want to join us there, only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. That also gets you in the hat for the June Pro Trading Crate. Continue to bankrupt me, listeners. Take all of our all of our awesome goodies that we send out to you every month. It's pretty fun. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Remember, off next week, we'll try to get something in the feed for you, whether it's a best of or maybe a quick uh, data rundown so you guys are not left holding the bag next week. And then back again in two weeks, another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>